Hello everyone and welcome to episode 8 of It's So Beautiful. <laughs> Apparently that's what we're called now. Um, I'm your dungeon master, Maz, and I use they, them, and I'm here with my all tiefling party and we're going to go on a trip around the plains. Oh, time to read all the same stuff again that I read every week. Tieflings are not all the same anymore. <laughs> because some of us are using modern kinds to make our tieflings. So let's meet everyone, see who they're playing, who they are, what pronouns they use, and what tiefling variant they're using, if any. So let's start with Shauna. Hi. Hi, I'm Shauna. She, her, um, playing Levity, the uh, Glacia tiefling. Um, drunken master monk, and she's sad because Mad did us some real sad stuff last time. Hi, Hadil. Me, your friend, Hadil. Uh, she, her, I play Mita, a swashbuckling rogue. Almost brought out words arcs, I'm tired. And, uh, I don't, I don't think Mika is sad, but she wants to know what's in that basement. Just <laughs> throwing it out there. I want to see in the basement. I told you, it's really nice. <laughs> oh, I can't. Hi, Chloe. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Chloe. Um, I'm playing uh, Lyra, a oaf of the Ancients Paladin, um, the mom of this lovely group of disaster pals. Um, I'm ready to kick some butt, and but do it safely. <laughs> I love pronouns, please. Oh, yes, um, she and her. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hey, I'm Lisa. I go by she, her, and I play Mercy, who is a shadow sorceress from Ravenloft, who was swapped as a child with a human baby. Um, and now she's in Sigil. Uh, she sacrificed some people last session, um, and she's upset that Levity's mad at her. Hi, Kayla. Hi. I'm Kayla, pronouns she, her, and I play Pentar, um, Zugmoy Tiefling, which is kind of a modification of one of the variants in Mordenkainen. Um, Pentar is okay because she did not experience what everyone else experienced last time, so. Pentar had a great time. She had a fun adventure. <laughs> Hi, Holly. Hello, hello everyone. <laughs> How's it going? I'm Holly. Uh, pronouns are she, her. And I play Dirge, uh, the Dustman Tiefling, uh, Bard of Whispers, who is also trying to bring the true death to everyone around her. Um, you may notice that TK is not with us this week. We miss you, TK. Uh, they are not at home. Doing Dead. something. <laughs> Thank um, you, Adil. <laughs> sad. So they'll be back next week. So, let's get going. The multiverse is an infinite place. All manner of planes and demi-planes exist in the cosmology known as the Great Wheel. Our tale is woven in the Outer Planes, a circle of 16 named planes which arc around a central hub known as the Outlands. And we begin today's journey back in Sigil. For those of you who aren't familiar, Sigil, also known as the City of Doors, is a donut-shaped city which hovers high above an infinite spire in the centre of the Outlands. Our heroes have been granted a kip, or house, by Dirge's uncle Jisson, where they've made themselves as comfortable as they can. I believe that Levity and Mercy are in the attic. Uh, Gil's reluctantly sharing a room with Lyra. I think there's a sheet across the room so he doesn't see Lyra's ankles. Uh, Mega has commandeered a closet under the stairs, and Dirge and Penta are being furtive in the basement. So we're going to start this week... Uh, Right where we left off last time, you've just stepped through the portal into Sigil, and Gil <clears throat> mutters something about he's got an appointment and rushes off. Uh, Mercy yells after him, but you have ch come back and do your chores. You have dishes in the sink. <laughs> he does not appear to have heard you. Let, Let him go. He'll come back. Doesn't appear to. <laughs> Lyra will be like, I can, I can do his share of the dishes this week. It's, it's totally fine. Just make sure he gets to do double time when he comes back, or else he's gonna do this every time he has to do these dishes. Mm -hmm. It's only fair. Are you heading straight back to the kip? Um. 
what time of day is it? It's uh, close to peak, you would assume, from how bright it is. Do we know how much time has passed since like we've been in the other? At the moment, no. I guess we should probably head home first, at least to get like a fresh change of clothes. We're a right mess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. We need to we need to get everyone cleaned up and she'll like pat Nigo on the hair and like try to like Confetti it. falls out. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need to make sure the it's still alive in the base. I mean just yeah, let's go home and clean up. We have to get rid of the uh the cheese sculpture needs to go right away. Yeah. Yeah. Gil's not here, cheese sculpture's gone. Uh <laughs> Penta, you are currently in a, a cranium wrap form on Dirge's shoulder. Oh, okay. Sort of so I'm just... one at the last minute before they step through the portal. Yes, I'm rubbing my little rat paws together, like, <laughs> yes, the basement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the same thing. Like, it's like, I just look the same. Like, that's, mm. that's, that's not concerning at all when both of you do that at the same time. Mika's also doing it. Like, she sees them doing it. And she's like, I want to do it. Too. Also, don't forget my hands are like gross black claws. <laughs> just, just a reminder. Just reminding everyone. So you arrive home and open the door, and I'd like everyone to make a Constitution saving throw. Oh, what? Oh, no. In our own home? In our my house? Sake. This is <laughs> our own dojo. Uh, I think oh. I know who's who's. Oh no. Oh. Yes. There we go. Dirty 20. Miga is fine. Miga is absolutely fine. Miga knows no discomfort when it comes to smells or food. <laughs> Level two? Five. Oh no. Dirge, you start vomiting at the smell. Oh no. This My is face. An, 18. an 18, you're fine. This is worse than the mortuary smells. Oh, much, much worse. worse. Miga starts Jeez, yelling, it's raining. <laughs> I just start going, I've reached, I'm dying. I've reached the true death. (laughs) Is that that cheese sculpture? It's awful. Did anyone get less than 18? Oh my. I I did. I got a 13. Okay. You just retch a bit. I'm just just, like trying to hold it in. Yeah. There's just an awful smell. And (sighs) as you sort of like, as the door is opened, Mercy, you see there's just a thin layer of dust on everything. Except for there's a tri- trail of slime and leaves and fingers and toes leading out of the basement. The basement door has been smashed open. Um, Mercy carefully walks in. She snaps her fingers and her little duster immediately starts working on all of the dust around the house. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm following the slime trail just like, what? in the name of the morning lord is going on um and i immediately look at dirge and pentar suspiciously i i I, I whisper to pentar i'm like there was nothing in there what what is this i just i squeak back in your ear (laughs) just like shifty glances and then i hide maybe some mushrooms like maybe a couple of them and i only i okay so there was probably a couple of dead bodies and maybe a couple of mushrooms (laughs) rat gestures and then i hide in your hood (laughs) i'm just like i don't i'm just like i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) we were just sleeping down there we just had a couple of soft things that might have been mushrooms or dead people i pop my head out and nod you closed the door to the basement right you locked it. Left. I saw you lock it. It's not oh. locked. Well, there's probably some. I mean, I don't know. This is. Uh, they could. They were dead. I'm just saying. How many were there? I don't know. They're just parts. Like you just find them on the street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> parts on the street. I've never. Oh my god. Oh, and like she'll like cover <laughs> Mika's ears and be like, on the street. We've taken her on the street. Uh, she's seen the streets here. Trust me. <laughs> There's parts on the street. Mega, Mega. I'm like Mega. Yes. You've seen body parts. Yeah, on the street. <laughs> See? <laughs> Nara like freaks out. She's like, no, this is no place for. Oh my god. And she'll like start to like follow Mercy and like try to figure out where the heck this is coming from. I'm so like Pentar, I... Pentar, go down and check. The, the, go check our domicile. See what happened. So right. I've smelled plenty of 
uh, dismembered body parts before in my lovely home. Mm -hmm. um, does this smell like body parts? It does not smell like body parts. Um, Levy said to go straight to Gil's room. Is it the cheese sculpture <laughs> still there, or is it? So the slime trail uh, actually leads up to Gil's room and oh. out of a window, and the window's all smashed. And there's just this, yeah, it's a trail of there's like leaves and slime and fingers and toes and just bits. <laughs> Chunks of what? undescribable flesh. And it's my bed. Oh. <laughs> it went this way. It looks like it took out our wall. So, yeah, out. the window is all broken, but also the cheese sculpture has like a huge bite out of the side of it. But there's like some weird vomit on the floor next to it. And Something ate part of the cheese sculpture. That's disgusting. The cheese oh, sculpture itself is very, very green and. <sighs> That's what smells. That's where the smell is coming from. Oh. It's, okay. it's... It did eat part of the cheese sculpture. Is that the chunk that is missing? <laughs> <laughs> well, Pentar wants to drop her phone. As a cranium rat, uh, run downstairs real quick and see if there's any indication of where this came from. Like the start of the slime trail. Uh, roll me history to see if you can remember what was in the basement. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna push with my like ten foot pole with my colossal pole. Just push it out of that that <laughs> hole in the wall. Just so it's outside. Ugh, I got a nine. Um, like the leaves are like triggering something in your memory. Didn't you used to have like a small corpse flower somewhere around here? Hmm. Yes. Uh, the staff that that Lyra gave to Pentar. So she uh, wild shapes back into normal Pentar and starts looking, rummaging through all of the mess of body parts and random books, magic books and whatever they have down there looking for the staff. Um, yeah, the staff is still there, but the uh, oh. the flower you grew on it is gone. Mm. As oh. are all of your body parts. They were just parts. Uh... <laughs> Oh, no. Pentar's like, um, and she kind of climbs back up the steps, and she's like, so what happened while I was gone? If, if, because I don't think she's been filled in yet, right? No. Gil and Mercy burned a bunch of people. <laughs> That's the yeah. in a nutshell version. It's not wrong. <laughs> you were deeply missed, there and was... I was greatly annoyed. I know. <laughs> We <laughs> we discovered another one of those terrible, terrible factories, facilities that were merging Modrons and people, and we destroyed it and the atrocities in it. And I kind of side eye levity. Feel she saw, just stares daggers back. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're both like quiet. Um, how obvious is the trail from the basement to outside and continuing on? Uh, once it get uh, the trail through the house is very obvious. Once you get outside, is uh, it obvious? It's, it's less obvious, and now there's a cheese statue that's splattered on the floor oh, good. where it was. They won't come back here, hopefully. <laughs> oh, we should... There's there's <sighs> some cranium rats now gathering around the cheese statue. Oh. I mean, that's fine. Oh, I, uh... Yay, friendos! Yeah, I want to see if I can kneel down and communicate with them. If they... Did they follow me? Or they just kind of came out of nowhere? Um, these are not the rats you have been with before. Hmm. You were with some rats in, um, Sylvania. Okay. Mm. Um... I would like to try and like I would I'd like to wild shape back into cranium rat form and ask them if they have seen what this was and where it went. Uh, that's my little rat noise. Being a rat, <laughs> not a crunch. Crunch is crunch is that. Yeah, crunch is this. I'm just like rat, rat is like this. Yeah, and then <laughs> we saw a large plant coming out of your house. Where did it do you do you know where it went? <laughs> <laughs> um they 
sort of like think a moment as if they're sort of like communicating with each other and then there's like somewhere in the hive hmm okay well I uh I turn back and communicate that this that this is what they told me I mean we have to stop it it's it came from the house it's I mean do we have to this yes. is why you have to put your toys away when you're done Pentar I do honestly think it's important I've been saying this this whole time honestly, honestly if Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, if it went to the hive, it's it's probably going to do us a favor and just eat a couple of people. Exactly. And okay. I was going to say that this is all Lyra's fault for giving me that staff. So, you know. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, oh, Did anyone else see that yeah. bus drive through? Y'all <laughs> <laughs> hear wow. that? It's the sound of Lyra being run over. <laughs> progressively by a cart. Um, Lyra will, like, look shocked at, at Pentar and be like, Pentar, but I thought you you like the staff and she'll kind of like look and she'll like kind of look down and look very sheepish and kind of sad and she'll be like well i know next time to not get you any gifts then the next time i'm out good <laughs> Mika looks at oh. lyra and goes can i have pentars <laughs> she'll look down at me and be like yes you can have all of pentars gifts from now on you hear that yeah. pentar you can just <laughs> eat it child <laughs> Church is just like it, staff. it might have been my fault for leaving the parts in there because I might have talked to a couple of them with speak with the dead. So maybe they were a little sentient on accident. I don't know. I'm just throw I'm just spitballing, you know well, how it goes when you got body parts in your basement. And Pintar kind of looks around and she's like, you know how I left? And then I came back. Yeah. I, I also learned how to make zombies. So I don't know. It might be <laughs> my, oh, excuse my me. fault. If you can make it's zombies. It's little, okay. but mostly I, Lyra's fault, obviously. I, I, I go next to Lyra and just say, it's not your fault that they can't control themselves. <laughs> behave. Well, Mercy rude. is going to go stand next rude. to Verge and Pentar uh, <laughs> and say, it's not their fault. They were put in a situation where they couldn't possibly know what the ramifications were at the time. <laughs> and I just stare at Levy. <laughs> I don't like it when our family argues. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Lyra will be like, well, whosever fault it is, but it's not mine, but whosoever it is, not mine, we need to solve it and we need to go after it. Oh, we know. It's a basement dwellers, but let's go. Mm -hmm. Or it hurts Does anybody don't else. Know what a zombie mm -hmm. is? Would that Rude. Be that she would ever encounter. Mm. Mm. No. Anything that Mika would ever encounter? Yeah, Maz. Is that something Mika would ever encounter? Would she a know zombie, what a zombie? Is? Um. Uh, possibly if she sort of lived on Sigil because the mortuary has zombie workers in. Okay. Um, there's, I'm pretty sure there's a couple sort of shuffling around the hive doing things. Mm, okay. Like, there's the post over in the hive. I know the hive pretty well, and there's, yeah, there's quite a few zombies that, yeah, including the, the message board outside the mortuary that is just a zombie. Mm. That you stick messages on. Oh. Yeah, that's the one cool. I was thinking of. People literally just pin messages to a zombie. Um, I feel like I want to explain at this point that Mercy is also a dustman and spends her time at the mortuary, but for different confused reasons. And she has no idea any of those workers are zombies. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so unfriendly. Um, okay. Uh, Levity's just going to go on the tallest troops that's nearby and see if she can find where this thing went. You see the carnage <laughs> from above. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I'm actually going to time skip us here. Um, and we'll figure out later what happened with the uh, oh, no. corpse flower. But what other things would you Oops. have done in the past month? Whoa! Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's enough time for it to get really big. <laughs> mm. 
Oh no. <laughs> there was probably some reports of something over on the hive and then they stopped coming through. Oh dear. Oh no, we've done we've done a bad. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I know that within that month at some point uh, Pentar would have grown another corpse flower on the staff and stuck it, <laughs> under, no. Lyra, stuck it under Lyra's pillow as an apology. <laughs> How long would it have taken Lyra to notice? Mm. Well, uh, hmm. of course well, she flowers... did it. She did it when you were out shopping. Okay. So when you were like, "Bye, guys, I'm going out for a whole day. I have to travel across the Sigil to go get some stuff." Pentar <laughs> snuck up and stuck it under your pillow. Mm. We have not seen Mom mad. I don't see Mom mad. <laughs> it's a it's a work in progress, I think. <laughs> um, Dur Dirge will stick a, a finger next to it. <laughs> oh yeah, you got to keep it alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Dirge um, thinks corpse flower means it needs corpse pieces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's just taking, too. yeah, she's just taking, she's like, you gotta put it there. I'm like, all right, here's a finger. A fingy. Here's a fingy. Uh, Miga has spent most of the month uh, sneaking up into Gil's room and reading his diary. <laughs> <laughs> she can't read, but like, she's been jotting notes. <laughs> In the margins, I've decided drawing on letters she shouldn't be drawing on. Um, generally rifling through his things. Uh, maybe, like, trying on some of his nicer clothes. Like, just, they would be too big. And she, like, tries all of them on. Doesn't put them back. So there's just, like, piles of clothes. Uh, there was all, to start with, yeah. anyway. I feel and, like the, those would get put away. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, Gil isn't around as much he becomes sort of more withdrawn over this month and he actually stops asking levity to fetch him things he's almost completely stopped speaking to you lyra um he's actually delivering his own letters and the only person he speaks to is mercy and he's just asking you about the wizard's notes all the time when he is there which isn't often okay he seems to be away a lot more does he do the dishes? No. Damn it! <laughs> oh, no. Miga, uh, does Miga notice that he stops asking for things? You can roll insight. It's an eighteen plus. Oh wow! Minus, yeah. Um. Yeah. Probably. He seems very different. Okay. So Miga notices this and like just starts bringing random trash to him, like. She knows that he writes letters, so will bring him, like, pieces of paper that she's probably pulled out of the garbage. Um, like, just various things. And, like, putting them in places to see if, like, he will find them. You probably get sort of an absent-minded, ah, oh, thank you, Yates, and then... Yeah. Empty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Levity, what do you get up to in this month? Um, I think Levy's just going to follow up on the, with the stones and try and, um, ex you know, get the situation to, um, the sensates and maybe get people looking for that wizard. And she basically just disappears for a month. She tells Lyra, it's like, I have to return these two, their friends and family, I have to know what happened to them. So I'll be back at some point. And she just leaves. Lyra understands completely and takes care of all of her chores to make sure Mercy stays happy and does all of that. It does not do her chores. <laughs> I just I'm imagine like nobody does their chores and then like Lyra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miga, no. Miga does her chores, but it's like, you know, like when little kids want to help and it just makes it worse. Mm -hmm. um, Miga does that. But um, Miga also likes to push uh, S43N down the stairs and like watch him roll down the stairs. He likes it, it's fine. <laughs> After about sort of like the third week of doing this several times a day the confetti finally starts falling out of him. Oh, like goodness. all the last of the confetti's out. Yeah. Job, I still have plenty of I have plenty of confetti in my bag don't worry. <laughs> Do you like just refill him and just push more yes. confetti back in? Um well, I, I would probably just, like, take it and put it in the bag. But yeah, we, we roll down the stairs. That's what we do. <laughs> he seems to enjoy that. 
as much as a Modron can. Um, <laughs> Mercy spends the whole month that Levity is gone ranting to Lyra about how judgmental Levity was about that whole issue and how it's really immature that Levity is avoiding her and um, definitely feels bad but refuses to admit it. Um, she comes in every morning uh, with splatters of blood on her as she goes about making breakfast. Um, during the day, she goes to the library and brings back books all about changelings and lore around them and what happens to the human babies that are taken. Uh, and then in the evenings, she works as, as the night janitor at the mortuary. Mm, okay. Yeah, I feel um, like, um, <clears throat> go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say Lyra will like, basically just like listen to Mercy ranting, be like, it's okay. Like, you know, try to console her as best as possible. Um, like I didn't, I didn't know that we could save them at the time, and uh, it was it was maybe a mistake, or maybe also for the best, because we're saving up the apocalypse, and my friend hates me, and that's fine. And I stomp up the stairs. <laughs> Lyra will shout up the stairs. I don't think she hates you, and like as the slam the door, <laughs> she'll just be like, oh, oh, oh dear. Okay, well, and she'll like just start to like clean up. I guess what you what you started to clean up. Stack all my books on Levity's bed. <laughs> this worries Lyra immensely. My I bed like... is like ten feet off the ground, so have fun. <laughs> I can levitate. <laughs> uh, during this time, I I feel like Pentar will have become like completely nocturnal. And you, you just hear sometimes at night the like like muffled like voices being, and then like something being dragged to the basement, and then you hear stuff in the like noises in the basement, and then by morning it's very quiet every morning, but you just every night you can kind of hear some like banging around and maybe some like faint screams, you know, something in the basement. Oh dear. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Dirge is like, she probably just sleeps through that. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably like sounds like the mortuary. So she's just like, oh, no, like whatever. Like, just just sorry to sleep. <laughs> every, uh, it's just like the lullaby of screams that she's used to. It's like, ah, oh, it's perfect. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing, but it's it's just like, you know, it's like one of those rain machines. Yeah. <laughs> ASMR. Just screams. It's an ASMR video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The tingles yeah. are back. Yeah. <laughs> and Dirge is just going to spend any time that she has just, you know, trying mm -hmm. to stand outside the house just with pamphlets and probably going back to the mortuary and like meeting with other dustmen and being like, do you think this pamphlet should be a little bit more like apocalyptic? I don't know. Just that How's kind of stuff. the burning on this new font? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're working on our penmanship to like try and be more persuasive in these pamphlets. Like just just constant imp improve improvement in that. That's all she's doing. She doesn't stop Pentar at all. In fact, she's just, she enjoys it. <laughs> so like, oh, sorry. Oh no, sorry. Um, I feel like Lyra would probably see or hear Pentar a little bit in the morning. Um, just cause like you notice like recently, like Lyra has been probably like getting up a lot earlier, like just like, and going out maybe like you know and and trying to like if you ever see her like she'll be like training in like the back or like wherever there's like a spot she'll like be like practicing ever since like the tower incident she's like been upping trying to up her game and like trying to like um I don't know like make sure that she can protect everybody so you'll probably see her like in the morning trying to like train as best as she can and you'll see her like try to do magic a few times and yeah Probably what you'll see her do. So, Dirge, you're standing outside handing out uh, pamphlets one day, as you do, and a barrier comes up to the door. Oh. <laughs> oh. Do you live here? I mean, do we really live anywhere as we wait for the true death? I've been instructed <laughs> to hand this missive. 
to the the the, the folks that live here. All right, well, I'm gonna trade you though, and <laughs> still like hand him a pamphlet. He sort of takes it gingerly and then passes you a um an envelope. All right, thank you. Well met, two uh, legs. That's. I feel like that's a slur, and then I go back inside. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I say, uh, someone used a slur on me and then gave me this. Who wants it? <laughs> Shaking it around. So I don't... Miga. No, no, Miga. You're not everyone, <laughs> anyone but Miga. Mercy's mage hand snatches it and Mercy across the room is like, did levity write? Not that I care. Uh, <laughs> 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 and they're just like, all right, well... I'm going to go back outside and get harassed and feel bad about myself and not talk about it. <laughs> she goes back outside. Glad you're having a good day. What does the piece of paper say? So you open the envelope and it's a letter from a barrier called Lorne Nalhof. And it turns out he's the barrier that you rescued from Valrand's compound. And he's very grateful to you for rescuing him. And he's inviting you to a party at his home on Isgard. There's, um, in the envelope, there's a pressed gardenia and instructions on how to reach the portal that you need to use. Ooh, a gardenia. Mercy takes that because that's her favorite flower. Um, and uh, starts alerting everyone in the house because I feel like... We're all kind of fighting a little bit since uh, that force situation and um, and the corpse flower and everything. Uh, so this is this is what we need, and we should probably write to Levity and get her to come back. I don't know, just I don't want her to get more mad at us. Whatever. Would I know how to get a letter to wherever Levity has gone off to, to get her to come back for the party? Um, Levity, are you actually coming back to the house, like, at times? Uh, no, but <laughs> I can just walk down the stairs, because I just climbed into my, like, window. <laughs> That's convenient. It's like, morning. Oh, it's done. How's everybody? Um, yeah, we were fine, whatever. <laughs> Good. You miss so much. I don't know where to begin filling you in. There's a party. And I'm just gonna walk out of the room. <laughs> Lyra will like go up to Levity and be like, she she really missed you a lot. Just I'm, saying. I mean, I she's acting weird. I miss her too. So <laughs> Well the basement door flies open at this point and Pentar's like, Can you be quiet? Some people are trying to sleep during the day. You try and sneak downstairs into the basement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're probably stealthier than she could ever know. I like. am. I'm an expert in stealth and I want to use it. I want, I want you to use it. You want me to use do it? it? I want you to do it. Okay. All right, hold on. Let me. I th it's a plus nine. It is a plus nine. Holy. Oh boy. 18 plus 9. <laughs> you just like walk right past her. <laughs> it's 27. Where'd Mika go? Does anybody see Mika? Pintar jumps up and runs down the steps. He's like, it's like that oh, white no. What do you so have? A knife! <laughs> <laughs> what does Mika see in the basement, Pintar? <laughs> what do you think? Um, well, uh, the, as as Miga sneaks down the stairs, uh, every step that she takes, there's just more and more kind of like crud and moss and fungus and stuff like sneaking up the steps. By the time you get to the top, there's not very much, but the further she goes down, it's like s squishing under her feet. And as she gets like a kind of dimly gross lit look of the room, there's definitely more body parts laying around. Um, possibly some forming a bed that Dirge sleeps in. Yeah, and... it's like an ossuary. So it's just like <laughs> like a crown of bones. Yeah. <laughs> and then crazy. just like some just some soft, dried It's just like limbs. the darkest nest. 
Yeah, yes. yeah, the nest of darkness. <laughs> and it's like, it's elevated just far enough so you can see that there's like a fungus nest under that, that Pentar like crawls into every night. That's <laughs> just horrible. <laughs> and like, you guys have and... bunk beds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're bunk beds. They and, have room, and, room for activities. Yes, exactly. And those activities are, as you look around, you see that there's like, bodies of various different humans humanoids creatures that are kind of like tied to the wall and they don't look right. like they're alive but as you kind of look a little bit they kind of like <clears throat> and move a little bit and they have like fungus growing all over them and like some of their faces are half decayed and there's fungus it's just like jaws are missing and there's like drippy like gooey gross fungus coming out of their mouths I feel like Dirge has also named them. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so like there's like name plaques. <laughs> there's like little name plaques, yeah. And like, like then like on one of them has a sign around his neck that says, careful, I bite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one that has teeth left. Oh. This is like. Mm -hmm. so, um, and as Mega is taking this all in, Pintar comes down and like grabs her and runs back up the stairs with her. So as uh, Mika gets up the stairs, she looks back towards the basement and points and goes, they have bunk beds. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she takes away from it. <laughs> and Pinter's like, yep. <laughs> and slams the door shut behind them. And they them. have pets down there. Uh, what? Pets? They have pets. Pets? Yeah, pets? don't I mean, doesn't. No, no, no we can't have pets. any more of those flowers down there. No, to... it's fine. No. Pentar, what kind of pets are they? It's all kinds of pets. I mean, there's all kinds of animals and stuff that we've seen. You know, everybody has pets. It's great for those aren't pets. It's research. It's important. Like <laughs> <laughs> moving down look to at... Miga and just be like, what did the pets look like, Miga? What did they look uh, like? Pentar, Pentar's like <laughs> looking down at Miga, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Turch too is just like. <laughs> when she like she like pulls out like like I don't know like a a shiny bone and it's just like I'll give you this. I'll give it to you. Yeah, suddenly, like, now that she is motivated by treasure, mm -hmm. um, I want to see if I can persuade Lyra. Just, my persuasion's pretty good. Um, I want to try and persuade her into thinking that I saw like maybe the pets weren't like totally real. Okay. I just saw like parts. Oh, like bone no sculptures? Like Dirge yeah. made like a dog bone sculpture. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. It's like, oh, pets, but like they were pretend, like pets made of treasure. Mm -hmm. So let's see. 14 plus 3. Do you want to insight, 14. Chloe? Yep. Clelira? Oh, shoot. And mushrooms. They have a lot of mushrooms. Uh, a lot of mushrooms. Eight. <laughs> She's convincing nope. you. <laughs> She's I doing would... like that child vibes. Like, there are pets, maybe. It's made of treasure. Hmm. Red, what? Hmm. And she'll like just like pet me like on the side and pet. Okay, I I I believe you. They're there. It's it's okay. I'm sure they're nice pets. And she'll just look at Pentar and Dirge and just like give them the dirtiest look. Be like, like the look, like I'm gonna find out what's in there, and I'm gonna be very disappointed when I do. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> well, actually, instead of glaring back, Pintar's just like staring off into the distance because she doesn't care. <laughs> She's just like, "Yay, everything's fine. Nobody found out." Mika wants her shiny bone now. <laughs> Dirge, can uh, Mika have her bone? <laughs> yeah, Dirge will the hand off the do the transaction. <laughs> yeah, yes. She's not subtle. Bone. Yeah, she's not subtle. She like holds it up. It's like a knuckle bone that's been like rubbed a lot, so it's just like a little shiny. Yes. <laughs> but in this. <laughs> Lyra still I gives you a, a very knuckle bone, bone bribe nice. gift. <laughs> bribe gift, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For seeing pets. <laughs> yeah. We need a new door for this 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 basement. <laughs> I mean, if you want to reinforce the door so that we can make it more secure for our experiment, I mean, ourselves, mm -hmm. then that's fine. I just, I look silently at Lyra. Just... I'll look back we at We have a group. party to go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mercy walks into the group and is like, why is nobody getting changed? We have a party to go to. 
It's a party. Oh, by the way, uh, Mercy, I have tracked all sorts of fungus all over the floor. I was definitely barefoot. <laughs> going down, look down, and I'm like, what the? Ah. <laughs> and I immediately so I just get down on the floor and start scrubbing. Does everybody have party clothes? They look good. Oh. I mean, you've probably got sort of some of the many outfits you and Gil bought for uh, Megas and Lyra's parties. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow never seemed to happen yet. No. Uh, let's raid Gil's closet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like that scene in Clueless. <laughs> Revolving closet. Uh, so oh we have God. like a, a trying on clothes montage. Yeah. Like, there's, a, there's a bit where Mega's sort of running through the room with pants on her head uh, with her arms yes. and the legs waving them around. around. If, if, she wants to, if she wants to go to the party like that, she can. Yeah. I mean, express herself. She gets to express herself how she wants. But we don't know how fancy party this is gonna be as like Lyra's like pulling off the pants off her head and like maybe she should just like wear like a nice dress or something as she's like Where trying to party? Come over here. Where's the party again, Mercy? Um Lord I forget his last name. What's on the piece mm -hmm. of paper? It's I hold uh, up the piece of paper. Lorne Nalhoof and it's where he lives on Isgard. Oh that should be fine. Mm. I've never been there before. Has anyone been there before? Do we know what sort of clothes they wear for their parties? Um, I'd say maybe Dirge might know something about Isgard. Uh, do you want to write uh, history? Yeah. I don't. That's <laughs> okay. way too fancy for me to know about. <laughs> I don't want to go there because those cutters just like to have a good time and you know, and they don't like dying just as a, you know, they're not really into death thing. So I don't really talk to them a lot. Mm. Lots of petitioners up there. I say it's better to overdress than underdress. Oh, yes. And I add bows to Amiga's yeah. nice dress that Lyra put on her. <laughs> so, like, Amiga takes out a handful of confetti and, like, puts it on herself. Mm. Amiga now looks like a walking cake. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you look delightful. Oh. Yeah. Look at she, she, like, puts like some confetti in her hair and there's like some yep. other crap in there I'm sure. Pentar, I know you don't like party clothes but I have these like she like Levy just takes out of like this box like and it's like it's filled with like these colorful mushrooms it's like we have these. these Pentar's something... just been like in the corner like mm -hmm. yes. I feel like Mercy would try to brush your hair and mushrooms would just like crumble out of it. Oh yeah, like like dried slime and stuff would come out. Gross. <laughs> I was like, these are colorful. Like, do you want these? Uh, just kind of, like holds them out. They're just like more colorful mushrooms she can stick on her body. Is yeah. that what it is? Yeah. yeah. She does that. Yeah, she's she's like, that's fine. Just... So I think we probably tried to get like, you want to wear this part? It's like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. So once you're all sort of preened and ready, you head for where the um, letter has directed you and use the portal key. And you step through and you feel that familiar shiver again as you step through onto a chunk of rock. And as you look around, you see that um, Isgard is made up of rivers of land flowing through the air. So around you, landbergs are bumping and flowing into each other and you're ears are just assaulted by the grinding and grating noise from all these rocks crashing into each other and you catch a hint of sulfur in your noses and as a small chunk of earth tumbles by above your head you realize that, that all the light around here is coming from lava on the underneath of these floating rocks and in the distance you see the huge tree that you saw on the beastlands only this time it's it's closer it's clearly growing through this plane and nearby, on a large chunk of land, maybe it's about the size of a city, this piece of land, uh, you can see the party's already in full swing. There's um, trestle tables with mugs of ale and plates piled high with foods of all kinds. You can see barrier milling around. You can see uh, carousing dwarves. And there's even some strange little squirrel folk as well scampering about. Please enjoy the party. 
Yeah, Levity's very excited, so she's just gonna jump across all these things and probably realizes the others don't jump across things as well <laughs> as I do. It's not too hard to get from where the portal um, has set you out to where the party is. It's just a small, small jump across. The right. will try to hurriedly follow as best she can. And her goal is to get to the punch bowl or the drink station or whatever there is and get a drink for levity. Which I hand to you and just say, I got you this drink. I mean, I was there anyway. So like, here you go. And All, right, thanks. You. All right, thanks. Oh, that's nice. And she just said, drink tip. Like, anything you want? Uh, Mercy whispers under her breath, forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> You just see, yeah, you see, Levy kind of kills. It's like I, I meant, I meant wine, <laughs> drinks, anything. <laughs> I'll have, I'll have some wine, I guess. All right, yeah. Uh, and then I sad walk over to where the wine is, like in Arrested Development. <laughs> Levy doesn't necessarily know what's happening. She's like, Why is she? She's acting weird. <laughs> I imagine Lyra is, is holding Miga's hand as they like appear and walk up and I'll, I'll squeeze her hand and be like, are you excited? I've, I haven't been to a party like this in forever. This is going to be a lot of fun. Miga nods, but thinks that her weird beach sacrifice party was a little more fun. With like <laughs> the definition, the rituals. Yeah, that was an amazing party. Yeah, that party fucking slapped. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just Miga no, she doesn't. <laughs> that would be hilarious. In her heart, she says it. In her, in her heart. heart. In her little heart. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And and Lyra will be like, well, I'm I'm sorry I sorry I missed that little party, but she'll be like, you know, it's always fun to celebrate parties with, with the people you, you care about, right? Yeah, let's go get snacks. <laughs> okay, and she'll like lead her in into the party. Painter, how are you going to react to a party? Who are you asking? Painter. <laughs> oh, she just like looks around and she I'm looks screaming. at Dirge and she's just like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Dirge is just like, yeah, I know. Do you want to go like sit in the corner and stare at everyone? Yeah, I was thinking maybe we can kind of watch where they walk and see if we can kind of determine any patterns and maybe you know and then wink. we <laughs> can i mean that sounds weird but sure <laughs> i mean murder <laughs> oh oh i oh i get you now mm -hmm. at least those squirrel people they look like other weird parts they look like they deserve the true death yeah they do <laughs> All right, so we're just going to follow the squirrel people <laughs> and try and catch one. Good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. So does Lyra hear any of that conversation that just happened? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this was a private whispered conversation. Yeah. Levity wants to get Lyra loosened up. She seems like she's very tense. <laughs> so we're going to go visit the drink table and have some fun. Okay, um, Lyra, Lyra kind of like begrudgingly like looks back at like Mia and just kind of like looks around and goes goes with you, Levity. She'll I'll be... keep an eye on her. She's just fine, I think. Oh. She will be fine. She's, I, I mean, think... I mean, she's not gonna be hard to hard to. She's not gonna be hard to find. Look, at, I mean, she's, she's so bright. <laughs> but yeah, here, here, take this. It's just like it is like abyssal wine. Ooh, it's strong. Lyra, Lyra will take it and just have a sip, and she's like, oh. Oh, that's, that's, that's lovely. Thank you. And she'll just kind of set it down. Just, oh, just a little, I'll, I'll have some, I'm just going to leave it here for a moment here. Or, and she'll like, kind of just like pick it up and just be like, mm, it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> it's really good. And she'll just like, kind of sip on it. Mega, hmm. a dwarf mistakes you for someone, for an adult and passes you a mug of ale. Oh no. <laughs> Um, Mika knows that she's not supposed to drink it, but Mika also used to be the ward of a wealthy, like, crime boss sort of 
thing. Very, very like Fagin from um, Charles Dickens. Oliver uses Twist. children. Oliver Twist. Yes, Charles. Thank you. Um, uses children to steal for him and would take him to events like this. Uh, so she knows she's not supposed to drink it. So she will pretend use one of her tricks to like pour it out the side and spill it everywhere. <laughs> because her dexterity is bad or her motor skills are bad but um Mika wants to try like finding treasure at this party okay um I'm gonna let you have treasure I because uh, there's a few drunk people that wouldn't notice you trying to pilfer so roll your 100 see what you pilfer roll it twice twice okay <laughs> And then 18. So, the first thing you manage to pilfer is a yellow button. Hell yeah. That's pretty good. And 18, did you say? Yes. You also find um, some jink. Useless. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh no. Uh, Miga sees that it's like, how much is it? It's nine gold worth. Mika doesn't want this, so she goes up to the punch bowl and just drops it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pentar and Dirge, can you both roll me some perception checks? Alright. Guys, I'm rolling awful today. The awful. Six. <laughs> Yeah, I got an 11. <laughs> um, so you're both sitting there and... Dirge, you're getting really caught up in watching this squirrel folk. Whoa, these things are trippy, man. <laughs> Weird. Unnatural. And sort of, Penta, you're watching them as well. And then something sort of like sounds a bit weird behind you. I, sl I slowly turn around. <laughs> uh, you see the Modron March heading straight for the party. Whoa, what? Uh, I mean, uh, hmm? this might be fun. This might be okay. <laughs> Wait, I heard you make that noise that means that we're maybe in danger, but it might be fun dying kind of danger. Yeah, <laughs> look over there, and then I just point. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear Dirge just go, oh no! <laughs> and the rest we... of you look around and yeah, the Modra March is heading straight for the party. Oh god. Uh, this, this, I mean, this means that it's a better chance it's gonna turn out like, like our beach party. That was fun. <laughs> party ruled. <laughs> The more the merrier. Yeah. If we don't bother them, they won't be aggressive, right? Yes, but you also know that they are quite likely to just march straight through the party. I mean, that's. I mean, party sucked anyway. Oh. <laughs> um, should we try to redirect them? Maybe. Um. I feel so bad. They them. decorated. So they lovely. <laughs> Oh, we have to. We have to clear out the party. Like we can't just like reroute these Modron. There's so many of them. Mm. No. Some of the guests have like sort of turned around and are noticing now, and there's some noise and kerfuffle. He just stands on top of a table and starts screaming, "We're all gonna die!" <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yay! I taught her that! <laughs> Percy jumps on the table and kind of claps her hand over Amiga's mouth. <laughs> um, and says, no, no, not die. Um, and I'll cast Thaumaturgy uh, to make my voice louder. Mm -hmm. um, and just say, we just, um, the party uh, needs to end uh, a little early. Uh, everyone and uh, should go in that direction. And I point off to if there's like a path where people can go that will be out of the way. All right, so 
the situation is, like, you're on this river of earth. The mm-hmm. piece you're on is not necessarily going to be big enough for all of the party and the march, because you know how the march is uh, very wide and very, very long. Uh, we're still looking at, you know, 15, 16 hours worth of Modrons constantly marching through. Um, Narl grabs you, Lyra, and he's like, Oh, you're here. Fantastic. But what are we going to do? Well, we could try to redirect it, or we can move the party, maybe move all of the guests so that we have a safe path for them to walk through. As long as we don't touch them or, you know, assault them in any way, they should be, it should be harmless. It should be okay. He's sort of what like, if we set stuff on fire. Um, Lyra will like look at all like the beautiful decorations and like everything and just be like um maybe fire's not the but they look like they have invested a lot into this party I don't think letting it on fire is gonna help the situation wait wait panic Pantar do you have anything that's really smelly yeah (laughs) do you think we can just put really smelly things here and get them to leave Miga can take out her Exploding wand. <laughs> oh yeah, the emergency There's screaming, one. it's an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> a child screaming is just as bad as an awful smell to get people to, yeah. to leave, so. Nothing will make me vacate a restaurant faster. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Miga takes out her wand and shows uh, mercy and like waves it a little bit. Um, and I'll nod and I'll say this is an emergency. Yeah. You have to take your hand off my 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 mouth though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Mika starts screaming, "This is an emergency!" and fires off the wand three times. Okay, so that's... so all the guests are now paying attention to you all, and right, we're um... going to do a skill challenge. Oh boy! Here we go. This is why I was asking before. What are you all good at? Still. <laughs> So, you need to figure out what skill you can use to get some guests off of um, the Landberg that you're on, onto the nearest Landberg to rescue them. Depending on how well you do, you're going to roll another die and that's how many guests you're going to save. So, let's start with everyone rolling some initiative to figure out what order we're going to do this in. Eight. Sorry, who was that with eight? Oh, me. Video. It's me. It's you. <laughs> um, Levity, have you rolled? 19. 19. Lyra? Uh, 12 for me. Mercy? 11. Pinto? 13. Dutch? 12 as well. Okay. Um, who wants to go first out of Dutch and Lyra? I'm going to say Lyra because Dirge is watching the squirrel people. Okay. So your order to go, uh, Levity's going to be first. Pentar, Lyra, Dirge, Mercy, Mega. So, Levity, how are you going to use your skills to rescue some people? Um, I am just going to use... Um, I'm going to actually uh, use uh, my skills of persuasion to try and like use my history of going to parties and taking care of like drunk people. Mm-hmm. And moving them along by basically just like kind of like talking them through like getting them to move and like get up and like kind of like go in like kind of funnel them toward a certain direction toward where we want them to go. Okay, roll that for me. All right, that is a sixteen. Awesome. Can you roll a d10 for me? Okay. Damn it, you went on the floor. Why are you doing that? Uh, five. You do persuade five guests. Okay. To so just kind of like, like kind of corral them and just kind of like herding cats through like the party and just get them to where we need to go. Okay. Uh, Pentar, how are you going to move some guests? Uh, you can Pintar do. S- wants... Sorry. Uh, do you want to know a few things that I've written down that you might be able to do? 
Well, I was going to say one of them would be um, since um, with medicine, mm -hmm. maybe she would try to use a mush like feed them some mushrooms that would give an effect that she could use to get them to go. Awesome, yeah. Um, and just, you know, and if they die in the process, that's also fine. So, <laughs> well, uh, um, yeah, I would just like to try and pick the appropriate mushroom. I have one in mind, I think, that would work. Um, okay. But do I need to do a medicine check? Yeah, to see if, if I you want to use medicine, use medicine. That was a 19. Awesome. Roll a d10 as well. Six. So, a total of 11 guests are now safe. As Pentar manages to get six people with her strange trippy mushrooms. Yeah, I was going to feed them the navy one, so they, um, which, upon eating, makes them float out of control and then just, like, kick them. So they just, like, <laughs> Yeah, so, like, so she pushes some of the party guests and they float over to another land berg and then land. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, Lyra. Um, okay. I think I'm going to use persuasion. Okay. And I'm assuming because I was with Levity, like, close to the drink and food table, that there would be a group of people near there. Mm -hmm. So I'll kind of help them. Um, and I'm going to go up to them and I'm going to be like, I heard that someone sneezed in all of this food. I think that we should leave and just, like, come over here and I'll, like, start to, like, move them. I don't think you want to eat that and, I'll, like, hit the food out of their hand and, like, try to, like, usher them to safety. Yeah. Um, so that would be an 19. Cool. You can roll a d10 as well. All right. And that's a five. Okay. So we're now up to 16 guests safe. Awesome. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I know I don't normally do nat 20s and nat 1s like for a thi as a thing with skill checks, but on this one, there is there are things for it. So if you do get a nat 20 on that one, let me know. Um, uh, <laughs> Dirge. All right, so I'm going to use persuasion as well, mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to attempt to play my music outside <laughs> of the party and be like, the real party's over here. <laughs> <laughs> just like click some bones together and just start like, you know, having a grand old time. Okay, sure. Roll what you want to roll for that. Um... Do you want to do persuasion or performance? What's best? I guess I'll do performance. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm like rolling with garbage, David. Uh, 14. Uh, can you roll a d8 for me? Yeah. I got four. Okay. 20 guests, that's about one fifth of the guests are now sort of like been persuaded to sort of jump over to other bergs or floated over there. And are out of the Good. way of the march. This is not the real party. I tricked them. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy, how would you like to save some people? Um, I would like to use persuasion. Uh, but what I'd like to happen is like Mercy is pacing on the table where Miga was, just like, oh my god, these Modrons, these Modrons, we have to get these people out of here. And she's so stressed out that her scar starts on her arm starts to burn again and the shadow behind her little red eyes light up um and then the shadow doesn't detach itself but it howls and mercy freaks out runs off the table grabs the nearest group of people and just says oh my god forget about these modrons did you hear that wolf if wolves come we will definitely actually all die we have to run and i would like to persuade people to mm -hmm. run away with me Oh, uh, nope, I'm just a crazy person. I rolled a five, uh, so that is a total of 12. Can you roll a d8 for me? Oh, no. Eight. Wow, you find the eight people that really hate wolves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> they go with you. <laughs> They're like, quick, run, and they sort of jump and skip over a few... Um, uh, of the floating rocks onto safety. Uh, we're back. Oh no, we've got Miga now. Miga, how would you like to help people? You're muted. 
You want? No, no, we can hear you now. Oh, I was like, I'm confused. Um, so I kind of want to use deception because I have a plus six. You I don't know how use... I could stealth people across. You could probably sort of sneak them around tables and things if you wanted. Um, out of the way of other guests that are panicking. You could do that. I also thought like maybe I could like take a bunch of their stuff and like put it on another like, yeah far away. Nice. And, and then like, go. They just stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, I'll try that. Okay. I will take things. So that's... <gasps> okay. 14 plus 9. Wow. 23. I'm going to make you roll a d12, actually. Alright. Wait, that's not a d12. Let's try that again. Um, 11. Awesome. He's killing it. Always. Forever. Yeah, Mika's just running around stealing all this stuff and then throws it all onto another Landberg and people are like, hey, there's my stuff and they go jumping over. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Levity, we're back to you. Alright, um, so Levity's... I'm gonna use acrobatics, so I'm gonna basically take one of the giant, like, you know, like, ale kegs mm -hmm. and just kind of, like, roll them, like, just, like, kind of, like, log roll them toward like awesome things so people can climb over so just kind of like kind of like walk on top and then kind of like move it over and then have it like so people can climb over so yeah cool all right that is a 20 uh d12 please all right i have one of those good six cool um Okay, uh, Pintar. Okay, um, I don't know if this is more of a persuasion thing, but with uh, my arcana knowledge, would I be able to kind of tell the remaining people that if they don't go away, I'm going to hex the crap out of them? Um, like with a convincing description of with some magic? With arcana, you could maybe look around for portals that might jump them from this berg to another berg quickly if you wanted to do that. Yeah, let's do that. That'd be good. Okay. Alright. That's uh, 16. Cool. Uh, can you roll a d10 for me? Yes. Nine. Awesome. So you can you spot a portal and manage to shove nine people through it before it collapses. And you see that over half the guests are now safe on various bergs scattered around you. Nice. Um, Lyra. Um, I'm thinking of using... I have high skill in, like, intimidation. Um, could I cast Thaumaturgy and mm -hmm. make, like, a loud noise? Um, in the air or something and try to like intimidate people like with that scary noise or something to get them yeah. to move. Yeah. Awesome. So that is... Oh no. Oh no. I rolled a two. Um, so two, four, four, two, three, four, six, seven. So yeah, that would be seven. D6 for that please. Okay. She was distracted I'm assuming by like uh, four. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Modra March was beeping. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effects. It's getting closer. <laughs> Dirge. See? Alright, do I have to do something different or? It's up to you. Okay. I mean, I'm still having a party over here, so. <laughs> See if you can persuade some more. They've listened to your music for a while. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll try and persuade some more. I'm like, oh, party's still going on, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, that's a much better. So, let's see. Oh, that's 24. Wow, roll a d12 for me. Yay. 11. Oh, wow. Yeah, about three quarters. Party's quarter bumping. Three quarters of the guests are safe now as these 11 people sort of shuffle over past Dirge to safety. 
Uh, Mercy. Um, I would like, so Mercy ran off with those eight people and I'd like her shadow to have stayed where it was. Mm -hmm. And it turns into that shadow wolf that just starts running around, freaking everybody out. Okay. And maybe like intimidate them. Yeah. To, do I use my intimidation or a dire wolf's intimidation? Use yours. Okay. That is much better. <laughs> is that for that me? That is it. Eighteen. Eighteen. Can you roll a d10, please? Seven. Okay. So yeah, seven more people start screaming and jumping to other bergs out of the way. Nice. Mega. Mega wants to use deception and try and trick people into going onto another land berg. Uh, I'm gonna try and get them to go to uh, Dirge's land berg. Okay. By telling them that the real party is happening over there. <laughs> sure. Okay, 14 plus 6, so nice. 20. D12, please. 10. Cool. Yeah, there's only a few guests remaining. Um, levity, we're back to you. All right, um, Levy's just going to kind of like uh, use my illusion to produce like some fire and she's going to do kind of like a um, performance thing kind of to like kind of like shuffle them toward the um, direction that we want to go to another safe uh, land route. Okay. All right, so that is a 13. Um, can you roll me a D8, please? All right. Seven. Okay. Um, there's only a couple of guests left looking a bit bewildered and confused. Uh, and it's Pentile's turn. What do you do with these two confused guests? Time to feed them some mushrooms. That's what I'm going to do. Alright. Oh no, that was a six. For my nature check. Which one do you save? <laughs> <laughs> Roll a d6. Okay. Oh no. Five. Yep. Both of them. Are you uh, are you floating them again? Uh, actually, this time, um, I had another one in mind. What was it? I, I wanted to make them incredibly. I wanted to feed them a gray one. So they just forget where they are, and I just like I'm like, come on, come on. <laughs> They're just like super forgetful. They're just like, who are you? What's happening? And I just am like, come on, come on, and shuffle them along. <laughs> so you managed to move all the guests out of the way, and some of the uh, more enterprising dwarves are already setting up new trestle tables. You don't know where they've got them from. They've just appeared from somewhere. I always appeared from somewhere. And the party's sort of reconvening on all these landbergs scattered around as the march just starts heading through. Right. Yeah. No one died. Ooh. Ooh. Relief. <laughs> we. I mean, they could be dying inside at my party. <laughs> uh, Dirge, a dwarf with a horned helm approaches you. And oh. he says, <laughs> Would you like a jewel? Uh, no, I don't care for material possessions. It's a jewel to the death. Oh, I thought you said jewel. Just kidding. I mean, I don't, I mean, can you just die? I, I can die. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is like not the time or place for this either. <laughs> Just like, okay. As you look around, you realize that quite a lot of the dwarves are actually fighting each other. Why? It's what they do in his guard. What someone is oh. like, uh, well, it's, it's I'm just not prove the fighting honor. type. Mega wants to fight. <laughs> oh, oh my no, god. No, 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 <laughs> you can fight oh. if you want, Mega. Look at Lear. Like, don't the dwarves think Mika is an adult dwarf? Yes, yes they, do. <laughs> they do. Yeah, yeah. Dirge is just gonna be like, mm, looks like Mika wants to fight. 
Yeah, Mika just sees like all of these dwarves like going at it and like starts to get excited and she's like, Mika wants to fight too. Oh, no. <laughs> Mira will grab the back of your collar or like her collar and be like, oh no, as, no, like, as I go to jump in. <laughs> yeah, like she'll be like, oh no, no, we don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. Mm -mm. No, no. And the dwarf's like, I hey, let the lassie speak for herself. Yeah, let the lassie speak for yeah. herself. Yeah. Let her live her life. <laughs> this is a young child, my good man. I don't think she has... Lady! Excuse I have a beard, but I'm a lady. Oh. 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 <laughs> Clara, oh. like, her face oh, was, awkward. like, bright red. Like, bright red. And she's like, oh, I'm, I am so sorry. Um, let me, let me get you a drink. And she'll, like, run over to the table <laughs> and grab her a drink and, like... While you're off at the table, the dwarf squares up to you, Mega. <laughs> yes. Square up. <laughs> so, do you want to attack first? Oh uh, no. I think I have like advantage for that kind of thing. Um, let me see. Child fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have um opportunity attack. Um. Yeah, it, would, it doesn't say like any sort of action. Just that I have opportunity when it comes to attacking. Awesome. But yes, I would like to attack first. Go for it, make an attack. Alright. Ooh, not bad. Uh, would I add anything to that? Yeah, it depends on what you're attacking with. What are you attacking with? Um, I am going to attack... Does the dwarf have weapons? Yeah. What do they got? It's got a spear. Oh. Oh no. Um, I'll do my dagger. Okay. So that's... 19. To hit, yeah? And yeah. Damage? Uh, damage is going to be 1d4 plus 3. So, let me take this. Uh, so, 2 plus 3 is 5. The wolf just sort of goes, oh, as you sort of slip between her heavy armor and jab her in the side and she's like hey very good and she's gonna attack back at you all right i uh can i do uncanny dodge or do i have to wait you have to wait that's if you get hit yeah that's if you okay get hit. yeah so i'll do that so uh the dwarf only does a nine to hit which i think misses you doesn't it uh yes so it's your turn again So, uh, it's too much math in this game. Please help. What numbers did you get? Nine plus six. Fifteen. All right. Thanks. You're wonderful. Just about. Oh, am I adding my charisma as well? No. Okay. So yeah. It's just your attack bonus. All right. Uh, okay. So that yeah, that just about hits. All right, and then. Okay. Um, Lyra, as you get back from the table with a drink, you see Mia slaying this dwarf. I just imagine like with Lyra, like with these like two big pints of ale, and she just sees Mia just decimate this poor dwarf, and she just drops them. Like just like awestruck. She's like, oh, oh. And the dwarves oh. like around are cheering and whooping at Mia. And like some of them sort of like lift you up and crowd surf you. <laughs> Yeah! And then, like, one of the dwarves comes to you there and says, Oh, don't worry. She'll be reformed tomorrow to fight again. Uh, and and Lyra, like, she'll just be like, Uh, 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 and she's, like, totally awestruck, and she'll just, like, be like, Oh, oh, okay, as, as long as they'll be, oh, oh, okay, and she'll, like, try to, like, pick up the ale mugs and just look at Miga like a like what is this creature that she's like <laughs> Miga's a winner Miga's fun at parties <laughs> oh she's awestruck absolutely awestruck Miga holds her hand out expectantly waiting for her prize <laughs> for winning they explain there's no prize but there is a lot of honor in winning I guess that's fine <laughs> 
And they, they ask if anyone else wants a duel to the death. Oh, Pintar's carving in that dead dwarf right now. <laughs> Already down on the ground, carving away. Circles first, Pentar. Circles yes, first. I know, and she's just like doing the circle first. <laughs> Oh man, Lyra just like leans in to like to talk to Levity, and she's just like, "What party is this?" Well, you fight him. Fight. You need... should come back. Yeah, you need. What? You need to. You're tense. You need to blow off some steam. <laughs> They're not gonna actually die. But... And you can take care of yourself. And she'll like come on, look. do it. <laughs> She'll like look and be like, but they're so tiny. Nika holds up her dagger and starts going, fight, 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 fight. I feel like she, one of them has to be offended also, by that statement. I just said tiny. it quietly. I totally said it quietly. I mean, she's also she tiny. She's quietly she racist, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. She'll <laughs> fight you. She'll fight whoever sent you send. One of the barrier overheard uh, nudges you and like, go on, two legs. Oh. That's okay. the slur from before. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Lyra will begrudgingly um, grab her glaive, ready it, and uh, kind of step into the circle. Okay. Do you want to attack first? Mm. As another dwarf steps up. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go first. I'll attack, but I'm gonna like apologize as I'm <laughs> doing it. <laughs> To no like, apologies. <laughs> Just hit him. But they didn't do anything wrong, and I'll they... like wind up and stab. <laughs> I'll just like go for it. Uh, nat twenty. <laughs> Roll your damage. Oh my god. Okay. Um. All right. So that's my glaive. There's a lot of pent up anger. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um. That would be a two. Did you roll the dice twice for your glaive? Because you've oh, got no, crit. Not. A two and a four. And your um, damage bonus? That would be... Oh, plus attack bonus, so plus four. Damage bonus. So damage bonus. It's been a while, guys. Oh, no. Oh, plus two. Sorry. So that's eight. So, yes. Yeah, you take this one down in one hit. And then oh, the no. dwarves start cheering again and the body gets dragged <laughs> off before Pentar can start digging her whatever into it. <laughs> so, Weird. has Dirge heard that they're coming back to life? Like Possibly. Yeah, and so Because they, they've like... explained that um, their, the petitioners there like to fight as part of their carousing. Imagine, right. like, Valhalla. That's what's yeah, going yeah. on here. And as long as I, if I hear their petitioners, I'm like, oh, I don't have anything to do with this. And I'll just like, just stay away. I'm like, I'm like, Pentar, don't touch them. They're, they, they come back. It's no good. They come back. <laughs> oh. ah, you did wonderful, Lyra. That was awesome. A waste of my time then. And she just like throws stuff down and walks off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lyra will, will say a quick thanks um, to, to Levity and she'll, she'll start to kind of pray a little bit. Um, just like she'll walk away and like start to start to pray and be like, Any anybody else? Anybody else want to go? <laughs> Mercy will bashfully raise her hand. Um, her eyes dart at levity for a second, uh, but then she just says, "I could use some honor." Go for it. <laughs> so right. step into Boy. the ring with another. Mercy steps into the ring, and the second she does that. Um, an orb of darkness surrounds the whole ring. Okay. Um, so her action was to cast darkness so the dwarf can't see. Okay, so the dwarf's gonna make some wild swings with disadvantage. And actually rolls 14, which doesn't hit you, I think, if you've got your mage uh, armor. No, not with the mage armor. No, so you could hear the wild swipes in this darkness as the dwarf um, is swinging their spear around. Uh, Mercy, however, as a shadow sorceress, can see in darkness. Uh, so she just kind of like walks, do dodging his weapon, uh, walks up to him and just grabs him and shocking grasps. Okay. Uh, that was a 17 on the die. Yeah. Um, plus seven. So that's two, two, eight. Uh, 12 lightning damage. Zap. 
Yep. The as you touch and zap, the the dwarf goes limp under your grasp. And I drop the darkness so everyone can see, and it's just the dwarf on the ground with like little statics. Oh, let me collapse. Yay. They sort of uh, they grumble a bit because you blinded, and that wasn't very on as honorable as some fighting. But levity is cheering, so Mercy feels a lot better about herself. <laughs> Uh, is there any other carousing you would like to do at the party? Mm-hmm. She's had her, her honor. I think Lyra will chug back one of those uh, one of those uh, wines like that Levity gave her earlier after she killed the dwarf. Um, She'll just like pound one back. <laughs> Lyra, you were praying, weren't you? Mm-hmm, I was. Um, can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah. So, after she kind of, like, she'll grab, like, the wine, she'll, like, knock it back, and, like, she'll she'll go over, and she'll start to pray, and she'll be like, okay, well, that was exciting, um, and she'll start to kind of, um, she'll, like, kneel, well, she won't kneel, because it's a public place, and she feels very self-conscious, but she'll be like, um, Salune, uh, I, I'm sorry for doing that. I know that wasn't the most, um, that wasn't the most uh, right thing to do. They didn't do anything to me. Um, I acted under uh, pressure, and I, I do apologize. And she's kind of like mumbling and like saying, like, you know, Power of Selena, please forgive, please forgive me. Um, and uh, yeah, she'll just kind of mutter those things. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the party carries on a little longer. And then, Lyra, a little while after you've prayed, you sort of, like, suddenly turn, and then you see flying towards you is a strange creature. It has the upper body of an elegant human woman, but the Mm -hmm. lower body of a serpent. Instead of hair, it has a brilliant rainbow of feathers which match the wings which are beating and flying towards you. Mm -hmm. She glides to a stop beside you and hands you a crisp envelope. But before you can even begin to tear into it, she bows, turns, and departs. Oh, um, okay, so Lyra will, like, be like, oh, uh, and, like, she'll, like, you know, and I have the letter here, right here, so I'll read this now. All right, so I imagine, like, she'll just kind of look at the letter, and she'll kind of, like, take a, take a breath in, like, a deep breath, and she'll, her hands are kind of trembling, a little bit as she opens it. All right. Okay. And it says, Lyra, I know that you truly wish that I had chosen you as I have chosen others in your family. Please know that I would. However, you have far more important path ahead of you. After all, even the moon cannot resist her destiny. Oh. (laughs) And it's signed with an S. Okay. <laughs> so Lyra reads this and her hands just start to shake uncontrollably. Um, and she kind of falls to her knees um, and starts to... Uh, she doesn't really know what to do. She doesn't say anything, um, but she can't breathe and she starts to like, like hyperventilate a little bit. Um, I don't know if anybody sees this, but <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, she's very um, struck by this because this is, I think, the one of the first times like Saluna here, like whoever, like has actually made contact in this such way. So yeah, she's just gonna kind of like start to hyperventilate <laughs> a little bit <laughs> anxiously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I think some of you of- would probably notice. Lyra just dropping to her knees. Yeah, I think Levy probably knows she's been trying to like get her to like you know have fun, and it's not like <laughs> it's unusual when someone does that. So yeah, she'll go with like, "Are you, are you all right? What's wrong?" Um, uh, and she like kind of like gets up. She's like, "I'm I'm sorry. I think it must have been. I think it must have been the wine. Um, I'm gonna go walk over here just for just for a moment." Um, and she, you'll kind of see her like fold up a piece of paper and tuck it away. 
Mm -hmm. um, and she'll be like, thank you. I'm having a really good time, yeah. by the way. And she'll mm -hmm. just kind of like, before you turn, she'll kind of like put her hand on, her sh on your shoulder and just like, if something's bothering you, please tell me. I know you've had concerns in the past, so. I promise I will. All right. I, I promise I will. You've you've been so so good to me. You're so and she'll like pull you in for a hug. Yeah, she'll she'll hug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, you see a single tear roll down her cheek, and she'll wipe it away, and she'll be like, mm -hmm. "I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go get some air," and she's just yeah. gonna walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah, time alone's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And she'll kind of walk. Mm -hmm. She'll just like Libby will just kind of like just kind of sit there and just kind of like just watch her go and stuff mm -hmm. and then go back. Mm -hmm. What's up with Lyra? She should be careful going off like that. There's wolves out there. Um, I think she has things on her mind, um, Salune stuff. Mm. Sometimes you need to have a little moment to think about things like that. I think she needs a quiet moment. Mm -hmm. I feel like during all this like serious stuff, Petar and Dirge have finally caught one of these squirrel people. And they're just like, and it's like, ah, just like scream and like cover its mouth. Like, yeah, they're like trying to choke it. <laughs> and it's, it's just sort of like flailing and going, please, my children. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. And Pintar's like, you have children? Where are they? Oh, my God. <laughs> and Turd is just like, wait, if we kill you, do you come back too? No. Good. 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 Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> Can I do an inside check to see if I'm telling the truth? Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, I don't. I I I I think he's telling the truth. I'm like, damn it, they all come back. Let him no. go. Just Pintor just like drops him on the ground and like drops a mushroom on top of him. Like, <laughs> go. Be gone. Uh, what color mushroom do you drop? Let's see. I I will roll. I think I have the table open. I do. Okay. It is a blue one, which I'm not sure how that's gonna work <laughs> for this. <laughs> so you suddenly feel like something in your pocket dirge and then you realize the little squirrel person is running off with loads of your pamphlets and starts handing them out to party members <laughs> i mean cool <laughs> <laughs> that worked out in our favor <clears throat> yeah i like this one we can take it home if it wants to come oh yeah do you want to come live in the basement it sort of like ponders a moment and then goes uh, looks at the Does pamphlets. Mika overhear them yeah, talking okay. about bringing somebody else. <laughs> he says, "Okay, <laughs> yay, we got a friend." Hey, Maz, so is this like a squirrel person? Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's a rat ratatosk. <laughs> okay, this is. I mean, do, great. Now we have we have an apprentice, Petar. We have an apprentice. Oh, good. It's like. He, he can uh, help us with our uh, bunk beds. <laughs> <laughs> Build better bunk beds. Like, we really need help with that. Sweet. Uh, yeah, make it. You're kind of distracted at the moment because S34N is kind of just standing on a table with his hatch open, just spinning around, shooting glitter everywhere. Yes. Like a combo disco ball glitter cannon. Yeah. That's great. I love this. And then you sort of overhear um, Dirge and Pentar bringing someone home. Mika remembers the basement, and but she also remembers her shiny knuckle bone. So good job, Mika. Yeah. Doesn't know. <laughs> they could say no if they want to. How is Mercy enjoying the rest of the party? Um, Mercy, feeling like she got Levity's approval in something, is much more chill. Although she keeps an eye out over her shoulder for the wolf that she heard and saw. Levity comes up to Mercy and says, I hear those dwarves. I keep hearing them chatter about this honor, but you want to drink them under the table? I think we can take them. Let's do it. Um, the ultimate honor. <laughs> and Mercy joins Levity in the challenge. Ooh, drinking contest. Good. <laughs> okay. 
Roll a d20h. What is it? Just a straight d20? Yep. Seventeen. Eighteen. Wow. Uh, you win round one of the drinking contest. The dwarves are yes. starting to sway. Yeah. Yes. I keep trying to drink oh. from my microphone. That's not how it works. <laughs> Can you roll me another one? We're going to best of three. I got a 15 this time. Okay. 12. Uh, yeah, again, both of you. Yeah, one of them's just sort of like leaning quite a lot now. One more for me. Yes, 18. Uh oh, five. Oh no, one got a 15 and one got a two. So they oh! both sort of like <laughs> fall off their chairs and literally slide under the table mm -hmm. as you two uh, finish up. Levity will take Mercy on, like, just kind of like pull her up on the table and we'll just do like clink the glass and just kind of like bow. Yay! Mercy will twin cast Levitate on both of us. So we can mm -hmm. kind of float and yeah. bow, and it's even more epic. Yes. <laughs> There's lots of dwarves cheering and lifting up their mugs, and hooray! And eventually, after many, many hours, the party starts to wind down. And um, Lord Noel, who sort of comes up to you again and thanks you all for coming, and he's sorry that he didn't get to spend more time with you. Um, but he appreciates you sort of accepting his invite and helping out, making sure everybody was safe. And he gives you the directions to get you back home to Seagull. Awesome. Rad. So hey. you sort of go through the portal back into With Squirrel Seagull Friend, right? With your Squirrel uh... Friend. Uh, I've caught, their name is Squirrel Friend. Squirrel mm -hmm. Friend, that you've managed to some, somehow fashion some grey robes for. <laughs> it's just a little squirrel person in dustman robes. With mushrooms on him. With mushrooms. Yep. And as you step through the portal back into Sigil, this huge plant just comes barreling in front of you uh... and heads down the street. That could just be a coincidence. And there's a lot of screaming. Oh no. Is it like... Oh, it... that's weird. <laughs> oh, well. There's a strange smell of death following it. Is it is it on two legs or is it like kind of like an animal? It's like... um, It's got... um, Like roots. It's running on its roots. <gasps> so cute. <laughs> no Pentar. We're not keeping it. Pentar dashes off after it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of like that. Oh god. Oh no. <laughs> We've made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, we could turn this around and Pintart just runs, tries to catch up to it and see if she can communicate with it. Okay. Um so, is anyone else going after Pintar? Yes. Yeah, no, yes. of course. I'm just like, uh, those are my bonds. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine, like, Lyra seeing it, and, like, she, like, goes to, like, run, and then she just kind of, like, looks away, and she's just, like, sighs and just follows. Like, you can tell something's off, but she just kind of follows. She is definitely following. She wants to, she wants to piece of this action. <laughs> piece of that treasure. Um, <laughs> can everybody make a constitution save as you run up to the flower? Cool. Uh, oh, no, Pentar, no. you're going to have advantage, actually. Woo! And uh, Dirge, probably, as well. Okay. 21. 16. 22. Uh, 12. Okay. Lyra, Lyra got a 3. Oh, God. Lyra, you're just throwing up. <laughs> doubled up yeah. on the floor. This is awful. This is the worst. And mm -hmm. Dirge, yeah, you're not feeling great, <laughs> either. <laughs> Baby, I need to clean my bunk bed. She'd <laughs> <laughs> uh, be used to it. It's your pet. No, I don't. I don't put the smelly ones on the bed. It's fine. Uh, how is that a pet? Like Lyra, as she just like retches and just violently like <laughs> throws up like everything. And then the, we party. the plant starts retching as well, 
And you're like, what is going on? And then Sunny, you just go, and, and then sympathy pukes. It pukes a body. This yeah. corpse drops out of it and then just oh. raises up, going. Oh. oh no! And then it does that six more times. Oh god! Oh, <laughs> Mr. Sparkles! Oh no! Fifi! Oh no! Okay, so what? What do these? Are these like just zombies, or are these? Yeah, they're zombies. Zombies. They're, oh, they're just zombies. Penta. Right. They have name tags on them, though. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> but oh, half I, the mm. name tags were done by Penta, so they're yeah. just drawings. Oh. Yeah, I, hel- um, I, I helped at the beginning, and then Dirge was like, stop it. <laughs> you can't actually write words. <laughs> yeah, that's not a word. That's just a picture of a skull. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> the aesthetic is, is good, but... <laughs> yeah, Penta, what would you like to do with your flower? Um, well, I would like to speak with plants at it and try to communicate with it. Okay. Um... So I just I just wanna be like, what are you what are you doing? Hey mama. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Where been. have you been? Uh well I, there's a lot to unpack here. Um I would uh where'd you come from? You made me. Mm, how did I make you? Um with your stick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Well, is that where babies come from? <laughs> <laughs> if, well, do you want to go home? Where? Why have you been running around? I was bored. Oh well. You went away. Yeah. I, well, I didn't know that you would become sentient and start running around. <laughs> so that's not my fault. Um, Dirge, some sort of collectors are kind of shuffling up trying to grab the zombies from you. Oh, I mean, it's kind of solving a problem for us because we have more of them. So I'm just like, go go for it. Yeah. Have, have fun. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Cutters. That one's name is Fifi, though. Just remember, <laughs> that's what they answer to. The, the, the collector with that one just sort of like, shrugs and drags it off (laughs) (laughs) i'm like no respect these days so um just does this guy does he have like a big corpse flower on him like like a like a pokemon like a bulbasaur or something like on his back no he he literally is a flower so it's like roots then the body and then it's flowers at the top so he could like close it yeah if he wanted to okay i'm just gonna be like would you mind closing yourself up <laughs> oh sorry Do I yeah smell it's okay bad? we always we we all make mistakes it's fine Whoops. i'm fine with it it's just them it's they're you know you notice that like there's sort of no one around you everyone's giving you quite a wide berth which in Sigur was pretty unusual <laughs> lyra's still throwing up <laughs> <laughs> she's just barfing still and and if you don't close it, they're gonna keep barfing, which makes you very obviously get sick too. And we don't, you don't want that to happen. So, okay. And it sort of closes all of its flowers up. Yeah. And Pentar turns around at, to everyone else and is like, <laughs> "He's coming home with us." No, he's not coming home. With <laughs> we can't get it. Like jumps up and like starts cheering. No, oh, he's like he's like a guard. Like he yeah. can guard the house. It's That's what great. I was thinking. We could put him in the backyard. Or we put just... him in the front. You know, he just yeah. anyone that comes to we have unsolicited visitors. Like they could just get eaten. And we just have yeah. to provide him with enrichment, which Pentar wouldn't know what that means. But you know, we gotta give him toys and everything, <laughs> and he won't run around and be awful. So let's. He's a... We have, yes, we got a new guard please. dog. Levity like looks at the little tags like is this what it, it eats? Just off the courses? Um I can't confirm or deny that because suddenly my speak with plant spell stopped working, so I don't know what he's saying anymore. I don't know. He's just, sort just of, like walks- waving some roots around. <laughs> <laughs> so she just kinda walks away. She like Ties a, ties a, like, pulls a rope off from around her waist and ties it, like, to one of his tentacles and starts walking down the street. Yeah, he, he'll walk with you back to the house. And I just tie him up out front and then, like, 
walk inside and grab him a wad of cheese. <laughs> like yes. from, the, from the sculpture. Yeah. Is your it's sweet like, okay. with plants still working or has it stopped? Yeah, it's definitely still working. All right. Yeah. When you come back up the, with the cheese, you went, oh no, that oh. made me puke. Oh, what did, okay. Um, and then she just like reaches into her bag of screaming and like pulls out a severed hand, but doesn't let everybody else see it. She's just like being really sneaky about it. And she like hands it to him real quick. And he goes, that sounds good. And then eats yeah. it. And he goes, yum, yum. <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> oh, this thing just eats dead people. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I we don't uh, Pentor was trying to be subtle so that way Lyra wouldn't like yeah. lecture them but you know can when I, I roll oh, to see if Lyra saw it can <laughs> yeah. I like roll to see if, if she was, like yeah. yeah insight yeah perception perception alright where is it 17 yeah <laughs> oh yeah probably um, unless you want a slight of hand contest that Okay, well, okay, if, if Lyra realized, okay, look, listen, listen, listen to me, Lyra. Think of how many people we kill intentionally or unintentionally, and how we can now easily dispose of the bodies. The fact that you're killing anything at all, Pentar. You have no proof. Lyra. <laughs> <laughs> how many people have you killed in Sigil? She'll no, look. I, no. I'm saying like I haven't killed anybody. Have you killed anybody? She's like I have not killed anyone other than that dwarf. <gasps> but, oh, but that he wasn't in Sigil. He that was already was, dead. He was yeah. Um, and she'll she'll be like I cannot believe after the things that we have seen, you would agree to maim innocent people and feed them to this monstrosity. And she'll point to it. And she'll be like, I am disappointed in the both of you. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you're like, oh, what about me? <laughs> yes, the we're both too, of you. We're doing, we're doing that oh, thing. Oh. We're, we're doing that thing where like the parents team up and just like, it just gets more powerful. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were like questioning people. No. Like, I, killed. I was like, let no. me. Yeah. No, okay, Lyra well, hasn't killed me. Pinter, like you're doing this lecture and Pinter's just on the ground drawing stuff in the dirt. Like <laughs> she does not care. She just, Lyra. she is not affected at all. Lyra will rub her foot in the drawings. Like, oh, oh, like, oh. Like, hey, just like, hey, 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 that's how she communicates. And also, <laughs> listen, Pintor's really pissed off right now, actually. I felt, <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, if no. you read these pamphlets, you'll know that killing is just a word and just a different state that you end up in to end up to the true death. So really, it doesn't make a difference, and we're just recycling with this creature. Mercy it eats when... the bodies. Mm -hmm. Mercy, when she sees Lyra stomp on Pentar's drawings, is going to come up and push Lyra. Mm -hmm. um, and she's going to yeah. say, <laughs> we have a little disagreement. <laughs> Some of us have different beliefs. Some of us have not killed anybody in Sigil. Some of us yeah. wake up early every morning and do it daily. What? <laughs> For a good cause. What? Pintar, Pintar, Where? Pintar wild shapes into the giant centipede and is like gnashing her mandibles at Lyra. Oh no, don't, oh, no, 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 no crunch. No, 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 no. Okay, all right, well, no, 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 no. But, let, but let's not. And now Mercy's just between everybody, like freaking out. Mika uh, pulls out her wand and lets it off once. <laughs> Did that thing it's, wait? It's an not an emergency. It is an emergency. Answer it's me an straight, emergency. you two. Did that thing eat kill? <gasps> what? No. He oh, goes no. up to it and like looks in its mouth and is like, "Gil, <laughs> are you there?" I'm. Can I cast? Can I? Can I secretly cast suggestion on Lyra? <laughs> Oh, can you? That'll get fun. Yeah. I want to because Pintar's about to attack her because she's very. Okay. Weird. Yeah. All right. All right. I, I see. I, so I subtly cast suggestion, and that's a wisdom 16 saving throw. Okay. So I roll a d20 to yeah. contest yeah. that. What is it? Plus your wisdom modifier. Please do that. Please. 
20, dirty 20. Oh. No, you resist, oh, no. you resist my meager dead person magic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Lyra, you know that Dirge has tried to do something here. And yeah, and you know that I tried to magic you too. Oh. Um, okay. So Lyra is going to like shoot you a look like daggers. Like, like, just like, like, just, and you'll, you've never seen her so angry. She kind of like looks at you and her eyes, what are, they're all golden, start to cloud with darkness, like the, all across like the rim of her eyes, it starts to cloud until they're pure black. And she's going to start to just get real quiet. And she's going to look at everyone. And she's going to be like, I have to leave. And she's gonna go, and she's gonna go up into the house and up into um, up into her room, and close the door. I promise everyone that I was casting cure wounds. <laughs> like as Look a giant get. centipede, like crawls and like encircles Dirge and like has her head on top of Dirge's head and gnashes her mandibles towards where Lyra went. Went like she's just like basically giving the middle finger and oh, no. <laughs> Dirge is like petting her. It's like. It's okay. She just. Levity splashes Pentar with like ale. Just splashes her. <laughs> it's fine. She just she shakes it off because she's not she's not mad at Levity. She's just like oh Levity, whatever. Stares <laughs> <laughs> and like sits like freakishly close to the door <laughs> and slides the drawing under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. She so... slides this drawing underneath the door. Aww. All right, so Levity like climbs up the wall into the hole where Lyra and Gil's room is. Like, are you okay? Um, she's not there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yep. So she, she, you don't see her anywhere. Dun, dun, dun. There's a hole. Wait, there's a hole leading to the outside from yes. her house, room, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. You don't see her. <laughs> yep, she's not in the room. You, yes, hear Pintar, you hear Pentar from outside going, good. Pentar. <laughs> <laughs> Dirge will just be like, okay, let's go rest. You need to go rest in the basement for a while. Come on. Let's go in the basement. Come on. She'll like open the door and like point the centipede. Like, come on. Don't oh, yeah. curl She's up in your the, hole. Your little squirrel Don't curl friend, up in your hole. The little squirrel associate says, does she need the true death? <laughs> uh, listen, apprentice. Not currently, but one day, yes. Everyone does need the true death one day. But you're doing an excellent job, and I would just like to thank you for your service. <laughs> thank you, boss. <laughs> Today was a good day for Dirge. <laughs> like Dirge's big day out is the name. Dirge's big day out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I guess Dirge will just walk out since like Dirge has like put Pentart into her hole and tell the plant like, "Hey, I know you can't." really understand me so i'm just gonna gesture but you hear anyone come up you ah <laughs> <laughs> you think the plant is nodding okay good got good job a thumbs up and i will go back inside and okay um is there anything else anyone else wants to do because it's probably a good point to leave it but yeah i just I have you yeah. know how oh wait am i interrupting somebody no oh no. no i was just i was just gonna say where lyra went off to but you go first okay you oh you know how like sometimes in like movies there's credits and then there's like another tiny scene i feel like sometime in the middle of the night when mercy comes back from janitor duty and pentar and dirge are actually awake in the middle of the night off doing something she just stares at that basement door and curiosity gets the best of her and she uh, decides, grabs her cleaning cloth and goes down there. And when she gets down there and she sees those chained creatures, and I just want Kayla to confirm, those are undead, right? They're dead yeah, they're, they're the they're your fungal, fungal, zombie. fungal zombies. She sees those, the basement full of zombies and she just drops her cleaning cloth and goes, the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Does, uh, I mean, does everybody know that um, Lyra left that the kip, or uh, probably like by the time it gets to evening, yeah. Oh, okay. Is there any like footprints or something? Lyra, would you have been careful about leaving a trail? 
Probably because she was in such a rageful state. No, she wouldn't have thought of that. She just would have wanted to get out of there as fast as possible before something would happen. So that you, there may be a trail of cheese footprints away from the floor. <laughs> a few, maybe just a little, little scuttles of cheese. Yeah, People will follow them. Um, Lyra, where did you go? So Lyra climbs down, like obviously out of the hole of the wall, and she kind of just doesn't know where she's going but she wants to get as far away as that house as possible um and she'll just kind of push her way past people um push her way past everyone until she can find a quiet place in like an alley or in like somewhere and she'll kind of sit down and she'll put like her back against the wall and she'll like hold her face and she just kind of puts her head down and she starts to pray um, but she's not going to pray, obviously, to Salune. Um, so she's going to start saying, well, I guess you've made your appearance uh, known. So I might as well turn to you uh, in this hour of need, even though I don't want to. Um, and she'll say, please, please, out of everything, please tell me this is a joke. Some sick, twisted joke, some funny charade that makes me acknowledge your existence even though you're the last person I want to talk to but Salune showed me kindness she showed me everything that I wanted when I was an urchin on the street and and you are nothing but cold reminders constant cold reminders and I guess though she was never there for me so you're the one I'm turning to Savras you're the one I'm turning to right now, even though, let me make it blatantly clear, I do not want to. Your vision goes dark. And then one eye opens in the darkness. And then another eye. And then more eyes. And the darkness is studded with glowing eyes. And then you hear the voice of Savras. And it says, You would watch me die? If it meant protecting my family and my friends, yes. Everyone will die if I die. All the gods will die. Prove it. Your vision returns. All right. And she'll kind of fall to the ground and just sit. Sit and take it all in. And that's where we're going to stop. Ooh. All the gods will die. <laughs> Dirge's, Dirge's dream come true. <laughs> yeah, Dirge yeah. is happy with that. I'm doing it for Dirge. We're all just more mad at each other now. <laughs> Damn um, it. I <laughs> helped nobody. Everyone's <laughs> arguing and is upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Chloe feels bad, but Lyra, right now, she's <laughs> Lyra's mad. She's having it's some fine. having some time. She's she some she time. should be mad. I mean, Bantar and Dirge are murder hobos, a hundred percent. So, <laughs> uh, she loves them, but right now, mm. <laughs> it's very hard to love them. It is very right hard. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so lovable. You have dead things down there. Yeah, I mean, everybody has hobbies. <laughs> yeah, some people can have like a train set, and then uh. in the basement there's just zombies. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Mercy has cleaning. Dirt mm -hmm. and Pentor have murdering and maiming. Mm -hmm. it's fine. It's Experiments, awesome. actually. <laughs> yes. Ah, yes. Mercy kills people so that undead do not happen. Hmm. So I feel need to feel like I need to reconcile how I'm gonna get along with Pentar. Oh well, like because I feel like Pentar has already had this discussion with Dirge. It's just like the fungus is the living creature that's just using the bodies as a puppet. So it's not technically it's not, undead. It's not necromancy. It's yeah. fungomancy. Yeah, <laughs> fungomancy. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Or funomancy, which Fun is more fun. <laughs> Pentar puts the fun into fungal. 
Exactly. <laughs> hey. Totally um, different. Thank you, all of you, for playing as ever. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching. And let's go around and see where we can find everyone for the next week. Um, I'm Maz. I use they, them. And um, for the next week, I will probably be finishing Lisa's Mercy costume. I've got Yay! a thread on Twitter showing the progress so far. It's it looking pretty amazing. good. Mm -hmm. uh, doing my usual yarn stuff in the PAX Crunch at the moment. Getting everything ready for that. Um, Shauna. Hey. Oh, hey, um, Shauna, um, Flying Service on Twitter. Um, all my uh, other stuff, like um, Waffle Talk and Weekly Games, are on my Twitter as well. So and that's basically it. Yay. Hi, Hadil. It's me, your friend Hadil. Um, she, her. You can find me online everywhere at Tritty Such, T W I T T Y S U C H. I play Trapped in the Birdcage with Holly on Thursdays. And, uh, Throughout the month, me and Kayla do Bramblefoot Adventures at patreon.com slash Bramblefoot Adventures. All one word. That's very cute. But what is Bramblefoot Adventures? Please tell Bramblefoot us. Bramblefoot Adventures is an adorable uh, expansion pack. All ages expansion stuff. NPCs, magic, dungeons uh, for your role playing game using 5e rules. It's very it's adorable. Cute. Yeah, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that subscribe and like and share. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Chloe. I'm You're Chloe. Me. Um, you can find me on the internet at uh, on Twitter at Hey It's Chloe C L O E, um, and on Instagram at Hey It's Chloe Christine. Um, I'm currently uh, doing a bunch of things um, that I'm going to hopefully reveal soon, um, but I'm working like on a new website and stuff, so that'll hopefully be up as well. Um, but yeah, for now, just find me on the internet, say hi, um, talk to me about um, your theories, concerns, questions, all that stuff. Um, yeah, find me, find me on there. And let's let's chat. <laughs> yeah, cool, Holly. Hello everyone! I've been struggling with my bangs this whole stream. They're trying to get in my eyes. <laughs> you can find me at Commander Holly everywhere. Uh, on Tuesdays I'm on Dice Camera Action. Everyone's who, where we are loves to scream. And uh, Wednesdays I'm twitch.tv such Commander Holly if you want to come watch me there. And I think I'm also doing my usual mental health stream on Monday, which will be fun. And Thursdays are Trapped in the Birdcage. And um, yeah, and I've been doing a lot of fun uh, t-shirts and stuff with Kayla. And I'm, I usually don't like talk about my stuff, but the, the Kayla's been designing so many amazing shirts. So if you want to check them out, um, it's at Trash Witch Coven and it's pretty great. We have some new designs that we're going to put out that are just stellar. So we've just been having fun. Really, they're just clothes that we wanted. Yeah, <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> we're just like, man, we really wanted to, oh, we can make more? Okay. <laughs> So yes, so thank you guys for helping keep the pants on the pigeons and uh, Kayla for inspiring me constantly. And I love this game. I look forward to it every week. Yay! Hey. Love you the most. Kayla, hi! <laughs> hi! Um, I'm Kayla, pronouns she, her, and you can find me on the internet as K-A-Y-N-C-L-I. And this week, I think Wednesday is our, is Shauna and I's last Star Wars game on Encounter Roleplay, I think? Um, and I do Bramblefoot Adventures with Hadil, and then, like Holly said, we're, we have some cool shirts coming soon, and that's the et Etsy.com slash shop slash Trash Wish Coven, I think is the full URL. Yeah, I don't know, Etsy, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I just draw lots of stuff and have lots of fun, except, I'm, except Pentar's really pissed off right now, so... <laughs> I felt that. I felt it. I was like, oh. <laughs> "Your drawings." I know. Mm -mm. Hi, Lisa. 
Hey, Lisa. My pronouns are she, her. Uh, you can find all the various D&D, Adventurers, League, and other things that I do at Merciful DM or on my website, lisachen.com. Keep your eye out this week for a new episode of Behold Her podcast, <gasps> um, all about women and non-binary people in tabletop RPGs. Uh, this is the second half of my interviews with the women at Wizards of the Coast. So yes. Shelly Mazanoble, Kate Irwin, and Liz Shu. Uh, will be all be interviewed and the fabulous Ginny Loveday of the Adventurers League uh, contributed an audio essay. So I'm going very, to go finish editing that after this episode. Very excited to hear Kate Irwin's interview. I love Kate. I think she's great. Um, anyone, anything else for anyone else? I love you. Sorry, I just <laughs> to make sure everybody knows. Is that just to everybody? No, just to you. Oh, I love you too. I love hey. everyone here. Thank you yeah. for playing with this me. This is just for the hags. I don't know you strangers. <laughs> <laughs> this is private. <laughs> um, thanks everyone for watching us every week. Our crazy yeah. little show. Which is just going from disaster to bigger disaster. So. Well, next I'm time I'm real world Sigil, so hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. Yeah, see everyone next week. Bye.